I finally did it. I just hit my goal of making $1,000 a month in passive income only with less than 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll share the breakdown, YouTube analytics, and some tips on how to grow your influence and build your career and business using YouTube. But before I begin, I want to make sure that passive income doesn't mean free income at all. It's just that being a YouTuber might give you a better work and life balance and might help you grow your career and business to the maximum potential. Well, at least that's how I see it. With that in mind, let's jump right into today's video. So here's the breakdown of the passive income. The biggest size still came from Google AdSense. I've made $569.95 this month. Let me show you the YouTube analytics for the month. So my travel channel had 61,500 views and 6,200 hours. I've gained 440 new subscribers and the estimated revenue was $564.48. So the final deposit was $5 more than the estimate. What's interesting is that my views and the growth of my subscribers went down just a bit, like 7%, compared to the previous month. But my watch duration went up to 7% and the AdSense earnings went up 20%. In other words, my videos might have attracted less people or they were exposed to less people. However, my videos have found a better targeted audience who watch my videos for longer duration and pay more attention to the content. Now let's move on to the second slice of my passive income, which came to me as quite a pleasant surprise. So I've made $253.03 just from my affiliation with one brand. And this brand that I'm working with is a very established brand. Personally, I've been a regular customer and a fan for many years. I even went to their flagship store in Seattle, which is their headquarters. The correlation between my YouTube channel and me being a long-time customer of this brand started when I was planning my trip to Iceland last year. I knew I needed good quality outdoor apparel and gear, so I did quite an extensive online search and picked up some items from this brand. When I came back from the trip, I just made a video about what to pack for Iceland on YouTube. Back then, I didn't have any affiliation with this brand. I was just making this video to get views, and at that time, that was enough for me. Many months later, one of my other YouTube videos kind of went viral, and thanks to that, I was able to start an Amazon associate program, which encouraged me to reach out to this brand that I was very interested in being an affiliate of. Luckily, they accepted me as an affiliate, and I was able to start the affiliation using their third-party agency. Honestly, I did not expect that I would make this much in sales just through two or three of my YouTube videos. I don't have very specific data as to which video landed the final sale, but there were only three videos that I shared this affiliate link with, and one of them was very new and didn't get any views at all. So I'm assuming it was just my Iceland itinerary video and packing list video that led to the sales. So the takeaway here is that with the affiliate program, again, having an influence over a popularity will lend more sales and earnings. What that means is that you need to pay attention to your view duration over view count. You can get lucky with view counts. With the right kind of thumbnails and taglines, your videos can get a lot of exposures through YouTube's algorithm. But once you have people's attention, you need to deliver and you need to hold their attention as long as possible. So here's my two cents for a starting YouTuber, although I am still a small YouTuber. Try to focus on increasing the view duration at least to 40 to 50% before worrying too much about finding the trending topics on YouTube or perfecting your thumbnails. Because once you prove that you can hold a viewer's attention, the rest comes much more effortlessly. 
And the second takeaway is that working with an established brand as an affiliate is much better because in general, an established brand is more generous with the commission rates and the volume of the sales will be bigger compared to, let's say, being an Amazon associate. Speaking of Amazon, let's move on to the smallest slice here. So I've made $83.14 from my Amazon Associate affiliation. And here's the thing, I've used Amazon Associate links in so many more videos and other social media. So they are definitely getting more exposure but not necessarily making more sales and commissions for several reasons. The Amazon Associate program has a generally lower commission rate much shorter cookie duration and the average cost of goods sold on Amazon is definitely lower than the brand that I work with. So ultimately, you want to choose quality over quantity and try to be an affiliate with a more established brand. But of course, we should all start from somewhere, right? So being an Amazon associate is still a decent way to make an extra passive income just utilizing the content I've already made. It's just something I'll keep on doing for a while, but it's definitely not my priority. Like I wouldn't focus on making Amazon essential videos every month. Instead, I have other priorities now. If you are curious what they are, be sure to hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss out on a new video where I share what my next steps are to scale things up. So if you've been doing the math, so far I've made $900.65. And here's the last slice of passive income that contributed to my monthly passive income of over $1,000. That is the $205.31 that I finally earned from streaming my YouTube videos on a platform called On Demand Korea. All I did was just redistribute my YouTube videos to this platform. They are a subscription-based streaming service for viewers in North America only. They usually stream Korean TV shows and movies, and currently they are experimenting with daily vlogs made by Korean YouTubers like myself living in North America and I became one of their content providers. Just to come clean, that $200 I made from the advertising on this website wasn't something I earned within a month. Actually, it took a long time to make that amount on this platform, but they just pay me once I reached the threshold of 200 US dollars. So I exaggerate a little bit about the monthly passive income being over $1,000 and I want to come clean about that. So there you have it. I've made almost $1,000 in passive income only within a month and as some of you know, I'm also dabbling in selling online. I have a tiny retail gift store online and I sell fashion items on Poshmark. These need constant attention to the workflow and not much is automated. I need to spend time and money running the business. So they are not the source of passive income, at least for now. And I'm definitely interested in exploring online shopping, but right now I decided to focus on scaling up my travel YouTube channel by starting sponsorships, creating more content on different social media platforms, and adding a blog into the mix of the platforms so I can implement more affiliate marketing with those. I'll keep you posted with my progress, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time.